Hello friends, James Corbett here, CorbettReport.com. This is Propaganda Watch, where we dissect propaganda and the ways that it functions to shape and mold public discourse. And this week, we're going to be talking about the coverage of the Jeffrey Epstein case, especially a particular strain of coverage that is coming to the fore now that, pro uh, that uses a common propaganda tool, but you can really see it functioning very clearly in these demonstrably, on their face, ludicrous articles that are being pimped by the dinosaur media right now. So let's examine this from a tangential point of view. Let's start with a little bit uh, that comedian Norm Macdonald does about the Bill Cosby case, where he says he was talking to his friend Patton Oswalt about the Cosby case. And Patton Oswalt, in this bit at any rate, says to Norm Macdonald, you know, the worst part about the Cosby case was the hypocrisy. To which Norm says, you know, I, I tend to disagree. I don't think it was the hypocrisy. I think the worst part about the Cosby case was the raping, followed by the drugging, followed by the scheming. And, you know, hypocrisy might have been somewhere down on the you know, fourth page of that list. And uh, he's right. I mean, it's funny because it's self-evidently true. No, hypocrisy is not quite the worst crime that Cosby committed there. It was, you know, the raping, the drugging, the other things that were much more to the point of what that story was about. And in the exact same way, they're trying to say, you know what the worst part about the Jeffrey Epstein case was? Let me explain it to you. And they're uh, trying to deflect it in a self-evidently ridiculous way. Let's take a look at a prime example of that coming from The Atlantic just this past week. But don't, please don't go to The Atlantic's website. Don't satisfy their clickbait by actually clicking on it and giving them the traffic that they so lustily desire for their adver advertisers. I will provide a link to the archive.is version of this page. That's a sta saved archived version so that if they alter that story in the future, they, the original will be preserved and it will be preserved on the archive.is servers. So the Atlantic doesn't get any of that traffic. That's a handy little tool for researchers out there that don't know about it. Anyway, I will include that link. And uh, that's to this story, How the Epstein Case Explains the Rise of Conspiracy Theorists by McKay or Mackay Coppins. Uh, the subhead for this kind of gives away where this is going. Nightmarish allegations against the well-connected financier show why so many Americans let their imagination run wild when it comes to elite corruption. Please, if you need to, pause this video and reread and re 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 read and re 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 read that subhead if you need to to really digest just how ludicrous this is and where this is all going. Nightmarish allegations, oh, which by the way he was already convicted of in a decade ago, and was covered up in a sweetheart deal that we now know was illegal. Against the well-connected financier show why so many Americans let their imagination run wild when it comes to elite corruption. Yes, oh, these silly Americans with their imagination running wild about elite corruption. Oh, you see where this is going. But let's go into it because it really is a case study in a certain type of misdirection. This story reads, The more we learn about the allegations against reclusive billionaire Jeffrey Epstein, the more he seems like a figment of online fever swamps. The wealthy financier arrested last week for underage sex trafficking is accused of operating an international sex ring that could implicate high-powered men across business, politics, and Hollywood. Every nightmarish detail of his story, from the creepily decorated mansion to the flights on the Lolita Express to the stays on Orgy Island, aka Pedophile Island, sounds like it was conjured by conspiracy theorists. Again, just reread that that opening paragraph. It's absolutely unbelievable. All of these documented things that we now know about and that are coming out in documented, in court documents, in witness testimony, and all of these different ways that prosecutors are now uh, mounting this case, which, again, we've known about for over a decade, sounds like it was conjured by conspiracy theorists. But the dot, dot, dot there, the part that they leave out of that sentence is... But it wasn't. <laughs> it's not conjured by conspiracy theorists. This is documented reality. All of those bits, the creepily decorated mansion, the Lady Express, the Orgy Island, those are real. We know about them, but they sound like it was conjured by conspiracy theorists. Uh, it goes on to say, just this morning, President Donald Trump told reporters that Alex Acosta was stepping down as Secretary of Labor amid mounting outrage over the sweetheart deal he gave Epstein years ago as a federal prosecutor. The resignation will surely draw more attention to what Epstein got away with over the years and who helped him. 
it should not come as a surprise that some of America's most outspoken conspiracists have spent the days since Epstein's arrest taking victory laps. Which, of course, is an elaborate way of saying, well, the people who were bl blowing the whistle and trying to screaming from the rooftops about this case for the past decade plus have been absolutely 100% vindicated about the things they were saying, but that somehow makes them into bad people for so much as now talking about how the fact that they've been proven right. Uh, again, just... Just, it's self-evident nonsense when you read between the lines of what's being written here. Um, he goes on to say, uh, Of course, the notion that the Epstein case somehow validates every outlandish assertion uttered by the tinfoil hat brigade is absurd. But squint at the recent headlines, and you'll see a story about abusive power and elite impunity and moral rot in the ruling class, the ruling class, that helps explain why a certain breed of conspiracy theorist has gained so much traction in this political moment. Yes, because the important part of the Epstein case, the thing that we really need to get to the bottom of, is why do these crazy conspiracy theorists believe things about moral rot in the ruling class and elite impunity and abusive power and oh yeah, raping of children and things like this. Why do they believe these crazy things? There must be something wrong with them. And hopefully this Epstein case can get, shine a light into that. I mean, again, think of the deflection that is going on in this story. Absolute nonsense. Total, utter nonsense. Uh, it goes on to say some really bizarre, weird things, talking to Anna Merlin, author of Republic of Lies, who's talking about allegations of pedophilia are central to some of the most widely circulated conspiracy theories on the internet today. And Merlin added, conspiracy theories aren't based on nothing. <laughs> aren't based on nothing. And with every new Me Too allegation, convictions deepen among the true believers. Any sort of sexual abuse scandal that involves powerful people is taken as proof of their basic, basic thesis, she said, that powerful people are involved in sexual abuse. I mean, again, how can that not be proof of their basic thesis? Um, again, nonsense. But listen to this. It's sort of a sad reality, she said, that the world is so full of rape and sexual abuse and predation of women and children that it's possible to do this. That it's possible to do what? That it's possible to construct theories about how sexual abuse and rape and, and things like this are prevalent among the elite, the upper class, the ruling class. Yeah, it is possible to do this because it does exist and you just said it. You just said it. This is unbelievable nonsense. This is part of a psychological propaganda technique that we're going to name in a little bit, but just keep these these misdirections and these, these ideas in mind because it, it truly is mind-boggling. Uh, it, it goes on to talk about Mark Fenster, a professor at the University of Florida who'd studied the history of conspiracy theories, told me that the current prevalence of paranoid thinking across the political spe spectrum makes this period unusual. Typically, he said, the party that's out of power is more prone to conspiracy theories, but in the Trump era, everyone, right, left, and center, seems to suspect corrupt machinations at the highest levels of society. And really, can they be blamed? No! No, they can't! Answer your own damn rhetorical question! No, they cannot be blamed, because there is corruption at the highest levels of society, and this case proves that, underlines it, puts several exclamation points after that. And you're, you're admitting that at the same time as you're attempting to denigrate and cast ad hominems on the people who are pointing this out. Utter nonsense. Just total nonsense. But he goes on to finish this way. You don't have to believe in lizard people or baby-eating politicians to understand why so many are looking at our leaders and letting their imaginations run wild. Once again taking any straw man argument they can, throwing in whatever assertions that they want, mixing them all together and saying, if you believe any of this, you're crazy. So what are we supposed to believe then? What is allowable opinion according to the Mackay uh, Coppins of the world? What, 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 exactly what are we allowed to believe? What is the acceptable way of talking about something like the Epstein case? Because apparently it can't be about looking at anything at all about the larger picture of elite corruption, of how sex abuse can be used uh, in various ways, blackmail and intelligence operations and everything else. No, we can't talk about any of that because that's tinfoil hat brigade stuff. And we don't, we don't want to empower the rise of conspiracy theories by talking about documented, on-the-record, provable conspiracies. No, ah, oh, that, 
That's, that's totally the wrong way to look at it. So really, uh, again, think about the meaning of this article. M McKay, Mackay Coppins' central thesis is that the worst part of the Epstein case and the provable documented conspiracy to cover up sex abuse at the highest levels of power and finance for decades and to allow this child sex trafficking to go on in the pedophile island and all of this, the worst part of that is... Well, that, that means more conspiracy theorists will arise. That means more people will buy into these conspiracy theories. More people will lose trust in these, these elite ruling class. Utter nonsense. And if you think about it for three seconds, if you fill in the, 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 the ellipses and the, answer the rhetorical questions in this article itself, it refutes itself. But think about the psychological tactic that's being applied here. This is gaslighting. And I know you've heard that term because it has become au courant in the Trump era, but it has been around for a long time. And in fact, I talked about it six years ago now in Film Literature in the New World Order, episode eight on Gaslight, which, uh, well, was we talked about the 1940 British film about the story. Uh, it's an older story than that, but there was a 1940 British film that I talked about at that time with Thomas Sheridan. And I would suggest you go back and re-listen to that conversation if you need some more context about what gaslighting is and how it functions. But essentially, gaslighting is when someone documents the real, provable, tangible things that are happening in their world, and they are called crazy for pointing out those real things. Someone is trying to make someone else feel crazy for seeing and observing reality. And that's exactly what this Atlantic article is doing. You see this reality, you see what is being documented here about these child sex trafficking rings and elite pedophiles and billionaires with private islands that are flying presidents and, and Hollywood A-listers and others out there and all of this documented, provable reality. You see that? You understand what that means? Then you're crazy. You're a conspiracy theorist. Utter nonsense. Don't fall for it for a second. You have to consciously keep these tactics in mind when you're reading things like this, because they are effective. People do start to go, well, maybe I am crazy. Maybe maybe there's nothing to this. And it sounds stupid. It sounds like you're weak-minded or something. But no, it's a basic uh, uh, psychological phenomenon that's been talked about and written about for a very long time. The term gaslighting itself, now a century old. So... Keep that in mind. Uh, another example that I'll point you to, um, and again, I'll give you the archive.is link, not the direct link, is to a Newsweek article that came out uh, a few days ago on Eyes Wide Shut, Stanley Kubrick. In Eyes Wide Shut, Stanley Kubrick captured horrors of Jeffrey Epstein era. And I'll let you read through the, this article and dissect it for yourself. But once again, it's essentially saying, well, these conspiracy theorists had this crazy interpretation of Kubrick's film in which they thought there was some sort of literal thing that Kubrick was trying to talk about here involving elite pedophile ring or elite sex rings and this crazy corruption at the highest levels. But we all know it was just about psycho. It was just a psychological thriller. And it was about it was about the problems of monogamy and marriage and things like this. Uh, and you had to be crazy to believe this other stuff about it. But, you know, actually, it turns out that maybe it's more literal. <laughs> Again, it's this crazy doublethink that they're trying to do. And uh, you see this more and more, especially in coverage of the Epstein case, and you're going to see a lot more of it. Again, gaslighting. They're going to tell you that the worst part, the worst part about Epstein and the child sex trafficking and the blackmail and intelligence operation and all of this, the worst part is that it'll make more people into conspiracy theorists. Nonsense. Don't fall for it for a second. Uh, and, well, again, go read through these articles, dissect them for yourselves. If you have other examples, please do leave them and dissect them in the comments section, because I'm, as I say, this is a very old technique. It's been applied many times, but it's going to be used specifically, I think, quite a lot in the Jeffrey Epstein era, as Newsweek deems it. Well, that's going to do it for this week's edition of Propaganda Watch. I am James Corbett of CorbettReport.com, and I'll be talking to you once again very shortly.